Hey guys, welcome to wpacademy.pk and in this video tutorial, we are going to convert a Figma template into a functional and interactive WordPress website. With custom header and footer, a dual pricing table with toggle button. So let's get started and before moving forward, make sure you have subscribed to our channel and hit the bell icon so you won't miss any updates from WP Academy. <clears throat> okay guys so let's get started this is the uh, figma template that we are going to use for this tutorial SaaS landing page by Karthik Bansal I have provided the link in the video description for this template first of all you need to create a free figma account and then login into your account and then click on this get a copy button and you will get a copy of this template I have just removed uh, some sections from here you will also get some sections for these two I have just cleaned up the space okay so once you are in the editing mode let me close the other tab you will see uh, the editing interface of this template on the left side in Figma you will see layers about uh, layers of these templates that are grouped in uh, main section and then further subsections for each of the section that you can see uh, over here in the right side you can just simply uh, click on elements these layers will be expanded or you can simply click on any section and uh, layers uh, to expand them further and click on individual elements and in the right side you will see the properties of the selected element like colors or if you are selecting a text let, let me zoom it a bit and if you are selecting any text element you will see the its font properties its size and uh, etc the process of converting a design other either that's in figma adobe xt photoshop uh, or any other design tool is simple uh, you just follow three simple uh, rules or step or uh, you can call them the required requirements to converting a design uh, a static design from any design tool into a working website uh, using wordpress and any page builder such as elementor i will be using elementor for this purpose you can also use uh, the page builder of your choice i just want to uh, give uh, you a uh, overview of how a design uh, file is converted into wordpress <clears throat> you can use any design tool file like adobe xt photoshop and you can use any page builder of your choice this tutorial is not limited to figma only or elementor only you just need to understand some basics of the design tool like how you will be using color codes how you will be checking the typography fonts and settings and how you will be exporting the media like images icons and graphics or vectors from that design template you just need those uh, basic things about that design tool you just you don't have to be a pro or expert in that design tool such as i am also not a figma design or ui expert i am a wordpress professional but when you are con converting the design from any design uh, tool to wordpress uh, by using any page builder then you must have a great experience of that page builder tool because ultimately you will be converting this design into a uh, functional website by using the page builder of your choice so you must have experience and proper uh, knowledge of that page builder so you can easily replicate these sections you uh, uh, into your design uh, into your website so uh, in this case uh, the basic figma knowledge is enough i will be guiding you through each and every step that i am uh, performing on the screen but you must have uh, 
professional level elementor experience for following this tutorial if you are uh, interested in uh, building this design or you are already a um, WordPress designer using elementor page builder so uh, you must have uh, a proper elementor experience to follow this, this tutorial uh, however i will be uh, guiding you through but most of the time i will be performing some steps that uh, doesn't require any explanation that are pretty much straightforward like if i am making these boxes uh, adding some data creating some lists in the page builder so you uh, i am assuming that you should have that kind of knowledge already if you don't have any experience of elementor page builder then i must highly recommend that you first learn elementor then come uh, to tutorials of these kinds where we are just designing uh, the layouts from a design tool into our wordpress using elementor so i think i made myself pretty much clear so let's get started let's have a look of this design and before having a look on this design uh, let me show you what uh, what is the current setup of the wordpress installation that i have over here i have two uh, plugins installed elementor and elementor pro you can uh, use elementor pro uh, elementor uh, free version only uh, to follow this tutorial but uh, in uh, some sections like header and footer i will be using elementor pro's theme builder for building header and footer you will uh, you can't follow that step without the elementor pro but i uh, i am going to suggest you some alternatives if you don't have elementor pro you can uh, use those alternative plugins with the elementor free version and those plugins are also free so you can uh, convert the whole design basically using free extensions only i have elementor pro so i am utilizing this because i don't want to have uh, uh, many plugins uh, to perform uh, to convert a design uh, as uh, you know the more plugins you have on your wordpress installation the more burden it uh, becomes on your website and also pardon my english i am not a native english speaker so i uh, uh, i will try my best to explain things to you so let me just show you uh, what plugins uh, that you can use uh, if you don't have elementor pro for building custom header and footer with the free version of the elementor you can install a uh, header and footer builder plugins there are a couple of plugins available uh, i uh, recommend uh, elementor header and footer builder by brainstorm force uh, that that is basically the same team and team and company that uh, has built the uh, astra theme uh, there are a couple of other choices as well elementor kits and uh, uh, other uh, you will find a lot of more other plugins uh, that uh, you that can help you uh, create headers and footer designs with the free version of the elementor so uh, i recommend this plugin because it has uh, um, high active installs and uh, a lot of ratings uh, that speaks for them uh, this plugin so you can install this plugin if you don't have elementor pro and you want to build the same header and footer uh, using the power of the elementor okay so uh, when uh, we will be moving toward uh, pricing section i will show you another plugin because the technique we are going to use here is uh, we, we will be using elementor tabs widget to uh, uh, create two layouts for this pricing section because if you zoom in uh, into this section you can see the pricing table is not simple it has a toggle button uh, for monthly and annually basically two pricing options shown uh, by clicking on this button you see these kind of pricing tables on many websites uh, that switch between two different uh, pricing options so we will be using elementor pro uh, tab widget and we will be creating two separate uh, templates for each pricing option and then we will be using short codes so if you don't have elementor pro you you will know uh, you can't have the short code uh, using ability in the tabs widget or anywhere so i will show you another plugin uh, 
during that process that you can use uh, if you don't have elementor pro so let's get started and let me show you the theme we are going to use i am going to use hello elementor this theme is uh, developed by uh, elementor team and this is a pretty much bare bone basic theme which uh, the, does not have any styling or any extra libraries so i want to keep it very lightweight and you also should be using uh, hello elementor in case if you uh, uh, you want to you want your website to be very lightweight and you are using Elementor Pro or Elementor's power to build your website since this is only a single page website so we don't actually need a high end theme uh, uh, that has a lot of styling functionality customization and other plugins or libraries but if you uh, want to use the same design and want to build a multi page website like you want to create a page inner pages for uh, these menu items uh, and uh, contact pages or so on if you want to uh, add multiple pages then uh, you can use any popular theme like astra cadence or nave or cadence or cadence i uh, repeated uh, there are a couple of other blocks generate press and other themes that you can use uh, it depends on you and the choice is yours you can use any themes if you want to have the design for the inner pages and posts or blog or so on but since this is a single page website i will not be needing any that kind of theme so let's get started and create a page for the home page and start designing the process I will name it home and the template I am going to use for now is Elementor Canvas because first I will design the complete uh, home page and then uh, I will be designing the header and the footer. So I uh, want my uh, whole design area to be clean. I don't want to see the default uh, header and footer over there. Then. Uh, when we are uh, going to design the header and footer then we can switch it to the full width elementor full width so select elementor canvas and publish your page then edit this page with elementor and then uh, go to settings and reading and select this page as the front page or home page okay if you have a blog then you can create a page for the blog separate page for the blog and for post page select that page okay let's start the process and here we are in the design area of the elementor on the left side you see elementor widgets panel and its controls and on the right side by default you see a navigator you can move it anywhere on the screen you can stick it to the right or you can hide it i will keep it here so we can navigate into sections easily now let's talk about the design in the design we have a hero or featured or slider area you can call it whatever you want where uh, we have a menu uh, that is basically uh, in the header and then we have uh, some text heading and text and this is the important part as i have elementor pro version i will be using the elementor pros form builder uh, form widget to uh, replicate this same design but if you don't have elementor pro you will also need a form builder plugin and you must look for plugin that has this kind of styling options because there are a lot of form builder plugins and they uh, pretty much have their uh, everyone every plugin have their own uh, styling options so uh, you need to see what which plugin basically can create a form like this or you can use contact form 7 plugin with the help of some custom css code to make the design uh, of the form uh, like this but i believe uh, we can do this 
uh, kind of design uh, presentation uh, with the help of the Elementor Pro's Form Builder plugin. Okay, so uh, below that we have a product screenshot image. You will be putting your product screenshot or image over there, but we will be using assets and graphics from this template. And for the header, uh, you see there is a shape background. You can export it if you want to use this same shape as a background. You can export this design as an image or SVG and then use it as a background image. But if you want to uh, avoid that uh, image usage, uh, you can also this is basically simply a gradient uh, that is uh, created with the help of two colors. You can use gradient backgrounds in the Elementor Pro and then shape dividers to create a, a similar shape and not exact. Uh, I have tried uh, to use multi uh, different shapes, uh, shape dividers to uh, make them uh, look like this, but it doesn't work. So I will be using the image. Uh, to replicate the same design but uh, if you can uh, sacrifice on that or uh, uh, to have your design a little bit uh, different shape then i highly suggest that you will use gradient uh, background color simply for that avoid uh, images as much as you can okay so below that we have uh, simply some icons and then a services section and then and some about information and some product features you can call them and a video and then we have a pricing table uh, which is a basically dual pricing table we will be creating two templates for them and then we have a review section you can use elementor pros reviews widget or uh, if you want to have the same design we will be using sections and some individual elements like text, uh, image, box, and then star rating icon, etc. And then we have a CTA button over here, uh, call out over the footer. And then we have a footer, basically pretty much simple, uh, straightforward design, five columns and uh, a copyright section. Okay, that's enough for the discussion or talk. Let's get into the work for the feature section uh, I will create a new section over here let's set a minimum height to this section you can check the uh, various sizings uh, from here uh, like it's, its width or its, its height its height is basically set at uh, 1181 pixels but uh, you don't need to uh, set the sizes exactly as this uh, you uh, can uh, have some flexibility because all you uh, have to do is to show uh, this layout on different screen resolution because we also have to take care of the responsiveness uh, like if you are using uh, if a user is browsing from tablet or mobile then we will be setting different sizes for different screen resolution so let me just set it to 1000 and you can see 1000 is a pretty long area Let me set it to 900 okay and now uh, I let me close this one so basically um, the first step uh, I created the section too early the first step before starting any design process is to set the default colors and typography settings and button stylings for your Elementor website so you don't have to set the colors or select the colors or typography uh, each time you uh, are adding any element that's basically too much work you can simply go to uh, click on these dots and you can go to site settings and you will have the ability to uh, set 
global colors and typography fonts uh, for once and then you can uh, use them in your design anywhere you want first of all let's set global colors and most of the designers provide you a separate section or uh, file where uh, the colors that are used in the design or the typography that is used in the design uh, uh, basically the designer provides you information about that if you don't have any that kind of files simply uh, you can look at your uh, template and just select your elements and set the colors basically you uh, we see one uh, gradient shade of uh, uh, blue colors and then we have this a uh, dark uh, blue background and then we have uh, this uh, we have this some light background and over here and then uh, basically these are the prominent colors that uh, we want to set as default then we can use them into our design basically the colors that are being used on multiple locations uh, we need to set them as global colors to select the colors, simply select the element and you see the properties uh, over right here in the right side panel. You can see this is a gradient, a linear gradient and when you click on it, you will see two boxes for two colors and when you click on each box, you will see the hex value of the each color. So let's set this dark color to be primary. and then the light color to be the secondary for text text is basically all in black color so we just simply select the black color okay the accent uh, for accent I will choose this blue color as an accent color okay now we need a few more colors like this background you can click on it and you see this one is the background color add a new color let's call it sorry we have to paste the color over here then rename here let me call it bg1 and then this color we'll call it bg2 you can name the colors however you want okay The background is basically white so I don't see any more colors uh, this one is also we have copied the BG one um, that is on the background of this icon I believe this is it's the same color let me just okay I believe it's the same E3 E2 FT E3 E2 FT okay it's the same color once you have finished uh setting the colors from your design you can move on to the typography settings in the typographic settings i will basically uh, set the font styles only uh, for the sizing we will be adjusting the size for the each heading or other elements individually so for headings uh, the person has used the font family enter so our primary font will be enter most of the designers uh, use google fonts libraries so because they are used everywhere and they the fonts are easy to uh, find and implement but in some cases in designs you will see custom fonts being used by designers so uh, in that case you will have to uh, convert those uh, 
custom fonts uh, to web versions and then use those fonts uh, in the custom fonts library in the elementor if you have elementor pro i will be just showing you uh, in case if you are at that point elementor custom fonts Elem here you will add your fonts as custom fonts that your designer has provided and give your font uh, a name family a name then you will have to upload all of these supported files all version of these files basically your designers uh, in custom fonts your designer will be giving you a simple file ttf or any one version of the file normally it's ttf file or if you are using any custom font from any web uh, website you have downloaded then you will first need to convert that font into all of these formats that you can you uh, do that easily just click uh, search for web font generator you will find a lot of uh, generators online tools available uh, you will select your ttf file over here and then it will generate all of the supported versions make sure you have selected uh, these versions from here so when you finish you have finished uh, converting your fonts you will be given a down downloading a zip file uh, and then you can use these files appropriately over here then uh, and when you have added the font over here then uh, you will see a uh, uh, custom fonts section uh, in the top of the list default fonts basically or custom fonts you can choose them over here so okay uh, for primary and secondary for both i will be using enter or for headings or prominent text options uh, like buttons etc okay for text uh, this person is have uh, basically used enter everywhere for the paragraphs or for the headings but i don't do that normally i uh, you also shouldn't uh, you should make at least font pairing of two fonts uh, i believe he also has used some other font variation uh, in some way okay see so he uh, he has also used the main row font family so uh, you can use that but i will m i am more fan of open sans for text elements you can use some other fonts as well for accent i will also be using enter okay or you can add some custom uh, font family or style for uh, the usage let me just delete that i don't need a custom font family or style these are enough okay now uh, for buttons as you can see every button in this uh, design is same like it has a similar gradient effect from the primary and secondary color let me just uh, okay so we'll have to reload uh, the page uh, update and reload so we can have the updated colors uh, that we have set over here go to site settings again and buttons and for background select gradient first color uh, should be primary and second color should be secondary and the angle should be 90 because the color is uh, moving from right to left okay i think that's enough of some global settings now uh, we'll be moving moving toward the actual design okay now you can see we had created a section over here now uh, let me just export this image let me show you basically how to export this image click on this big blue area the image will be selected and then you will see an 
export vector vector 366 basically is the file name so click on export sorry uh, i forgot to sh uh, show you other options you can select the type of file basically the format of the file uh, i will be using png version and you can also uh, increase the size basically 1x is default size 1.5x 2x 3x we will be uh, adjusting the size for the smaller icons uh, when we are exporting uh, that icons into image format like uh, if you see any small image like this if you export it into 1x uh, size then you will see some distortion or uh, blur images in your design because the image is too small and your screen resolution is different so we will be exporting these uh, icons or small images into 2x or 3x size or we can also export them as svg i will show you both methods so for this simply select png and you can also suffix this file name with your own uh, name and then you can also have a preview of the file before exporting when you have exported the image downloaded i have already downloaded some assets during the testing you can see i have exported all the images from here uh, and this one is also bg vector.png and you can see it's a 1.1 megabyte file that's why i don't usually recommend uh, using images if you use a simple gradient background then you can avoid this heavy media load on your website but if the image is too heavy you can also compress the images in case you want to use the image only you can search for compress png and you will find a lot of online converters just drag this file over here and let's see how much size is decreased 39 percent is decreased let's download it let me cut it from here and paste it here okay uh, around 700 kb is pretty much acceptable so let's use that okay now click on the section and go to style section background type image and choose your image now adjust the position i will set bottom right size to custom and set it 100 percent so we'll have uh, you will have the uh, complete shape uh, design from the bottom if you set it differently uh, then on different screen resolutions you might not see the bottom area and the other method method i was talking about is using a gradient background like primary color secondary color angle to 90 or let me just revert the colors okay i want to make uh, this look like the dark <clears throat> blue color coming from right okay so now what you can do is go to shape dividers and select the bottom area and then you can use a shape for the background basically curve uh, invert you can have something something like this or something like this with some different adjustments okay you can have something like this wave so it's 
kind of similar but with some other design if you can compromise on that then you can have a very much light background and a light version of your website so let me just go back and go to classic mode uh, let me just remove these colors okay so background image is fine and for shape dividers we will have to turn them off with none okay and now uh, column position set to stretch vertical align to top and now we will use an inner section for the text and the form let's just drag an inner section and give this section a margin from top i will say 100 or 150 pixels should be enough and i will be using only one column okay so now let's set a custom width to this section i will set 1024 pixels and now use a heading element h1 copy the text okay go to styles select the color okay we forgot to add one global color which is basically white i will add it as a new global color let's call it just white okay now adjust the font weight to match the design transformation is capitalized and now the size you can see the font size over here it's 72 pixels but you don't have to set the exact font size it might reflect differently on the design and on the web like if i set it to 72 pixels you can see the font the text is uh, now in three lines basically instead of two lines so we'll adjust the fonts in the uh, newer standards from pixels like em and you can just match the size with the design So you see there is a break after start of text uh, word so you can add custom breaks by using an html element tag uh, ele element tag basically break so there you go now you can also adjust the line height accordingly i think that's enough now uh, we need a uh, text element you see the text element is a smaller uh, in in a smaller container we can just duplicate this section uh, delete this and we had set a margin let's just remove that and now uh, adjust the width of this section let me say it's 600 now copy the text and use a text widget over here okay let's just duplicate this one and now uh, we need a form over here i will be using elementor pros form form widget let's just drag it we just need an email field hide the label uh, input size set to medium or you can set them to large 
i believe medium is fine okay now email column width is set to 70% buttons medium and column width to 30% so basically they both uh, align side by side okay now you see uh, we had set the gradient colors with the uh, 90 angle the dark blue uh, color uh, is on the left and the light one is on the right let me adjust this thing go to side settings and buttons just revert the colors the angles will be different okay save settings close and now uh, to make this design look like this one uh, basically uh, we will not get the icon over here because the elementor form does not have an icon field to attach to the uh, input elements so uh, we have to compromise on that now let's just go to styling and fields set border radius to 50 for buttons set border radius to 50 and let's adjust the button text okay now select the column of this inner section and go to styles and set a background color to white okay and go to a uh, borders and set the border radius to 50 so uh, you can see we uh, have a similar style i just go to advance and adjust its padding it's basically decrease the padding a bit now go to styles field and border width to zero so you we don't have any border field uh, there is a, a bit of active styling like when you are clicking in the field that some styling coming from the theme or uh, form stylings that is basically showing the border on active now we can also remove that with the css okay so it's basically uh, pretty much similar uh, let's try uh, converting its width to inline auto and uh, inline auto basically custom let me set it 80 percent uh, or 90 percent and then let's adjust the width of these elements as well 66 percent Thirty-three percent. Okay. Uh, what? Why I am doing that? I am trying to uh, show the icon here as well. So now let's go to column settings, layout, and horizontal alignment to end or space between. Now let's use an icon element over here and go to advanced width custom. 10% and now select uh, the color for the icon basically black or we can also add a new color text dark select the icon
there is a default margin uh, set to this icon from the bottom let me just adjust this with the negative margin okay uh, before adjusting the margin let's just go to column settings and set its vertical alignment to middle okay i think that's fine you can further uh, adjust the styling with some negative margin okay okay that's fine so uh, we basically have an icon here as well uh, just as uh, just like this design okay i think that's enough similarity uh, for the design you can adjust the color a bit more i can let's just say it text light name it basically okay so we have pretty much completed the uh, hero section over here now we need this image now as you have exported uh, the vector image from the hero section you can also export this dashboard section into an image format but if you look at the preview you see there is also a background uh, available uh, in the uh, blue color that is basically a cut version from the top of this shape uh, for usage like if you are not using this shape you can uh, use gradient background color exactly like this uh, in your uh, sec section and then use this image at the bottom without adjusting uh, you don't then you don't have to use negative margins on this if you export this image as an png then you will have to adjust it uh, uh, with the negative margin so it overlaps on this section but uh, your colors and this image uh, may not be uh, aligning well or basically if you have your own png image uh, or uh, for the dashboard or demo of your product then you won't be needing this and i am uh, also i have also removed this background uh, from the uh, exported png so if you are uh, interested in learning how to remove that just click on these three dots and you will see further export options uh, you can check this box like ig ignore overlapping layers then you will not see any other elements just your uh, dashboard image okay so uh, you need to check the in that box in case if you want this same image to be exported as png although i also have provided uh, the link for the assets that i have exported from this template in the video description you can easily download them and use them but i am trying to show you how uh, basically uh, different things that i know about figma uh, how it works okay so let's add another section uh, with a simple image element and upload our dashboard image over here i have also compressed this image from uh, compress png website insert it and now just uh, adjust it with the negative margin go to advanced tab of this section and let's start adjusting the negative margin until uh, you see uh, it fits let's just say 150 is not enough let's say 250 or 300 i believe 300 or 350 would be enough okay so i just wanted to make it look like overlapping over here and, and also go to styles and set the image with 200 percent so i get a bigger version of the image over here 
okay so this section is also now completed you can adjust the um, negative margin and position of the preview image or your demo according to your requirement okay now let's move on to this section i have exported this whole image as single uh, or all icons as single image you can export them individually and then use different image elements or elementor carousel or something other uh, some other widget to if you want to make a carousel out of them but i just want to show them in a single image format just put the image element over here and upload the brand icon image let's give them some space from the top okay now uh, the next section is uh, uh, our services section create a new section and let's just use inner sections uh, let me first give this section a margin from top and bottom and now um, for heading uh, basically this is a simple heading we can use a heading element color is black for this section okay uh i will uh, design mm, this heading a little bit differently uh, because it's too simple uh let me just cut this text and i will use a span element with the style attribute and i will set the primary color uh, or accent color or to this uh, text basically i will be um, uh, creating a dual color heading so let's just say color and copy the color code go to styles set primary copy this color let me just revert it to black again and now over here i will use this color okay this mm, this looks nice uh, and now we need these boxes for these boxes i will use an inner section over here with three columns and for each column uh, i will first set some padding margin and the background shadow before that let's just use an okay if you have exported these icons uh, in image format you can export the whole icon uh, like this uh, from export like this and you need to make it at least 2x the folder i have used or exported see i have exported them as an image in 2x format so let's just use an image you can also export them as a svg image uh, <coughs> image element and choose image okay go to styles and set a max width of basically 90 pixels or 80 now 
we need a text uh, heading and text element you can also use the image box widget so you don't have to use multiple elements sorry image box choose the image okay for the read more button we'll use a button element uh, let's just say read more and use an arrow icon now we have set a default gradient background to these uh, to the button so every button element you are using in from the elementor widgets uh, they will also uh, they will all have the same styling so uh, we just need a uh, text here so to remove uh, the background effect go to styles and you need to select gradient again and then remove uh, basically instead of removing just select the white color for both uh, locations and then text color to set the primary or accent okay and adjust the typography as you like okay so now let's select the column the container column of uh, these widgets go to advance and give some padding enough padding like 30 pixels or 40 pixels i think 30 pixels is enough now go to styles set a background color to white and then uh, go to borders and you will see a box shadow and border radius let's set the border radius to 15 pixels and border box shadow let's select a very light version light color basically you can adjust by uh, adjust the opacity of the background and now the blur basically the spread of the shadow now we'll set it to 30 Think that's enough okay and we also have to set a margin uh, let's set 10 pixels from each side now copy and paste the style into these columns or you can just simply delete these columns uh, and after you have designed one sec one column just duplicate it and now you can easily just change the text i believe the margin should be a little bit more like 15 pixels now copy paste style paste style okay let's just make sure it may matches the design go to styles i believe the blur should be 40 and the color should be more light okay copy paste style 
paste style okay you can further adjust the shadow color as you like you can see the drop shadow over here you can also uh, check the opacity etc values from here because these are uh, different and this is something different so you will have to adjust accordingly let's just give this section a margin from the top Okay, now uh, I'll just quickly change the content of other boxes. Okay, let's just some margin okay now uh, this section is also completed now we'll move on to the next section uh, that is and you can call it about or information set the background color of this section to the pg1 and now we need two columns in this section let me just add the column and in the right column we have just a simple image and in the left column we have a heading text and a button so let's drag an image over here choose image hmm images i have exported this image if you are uh, want to export this image from this file just click on the image and you see export image option over here okay let's increase the width of this section to 45% and let's just give this section a padding from top and bottom okay oh we can also duplicate the headings if needed but i believe this one is different from the above because it has a simple color it is black you can also add a break element over here let's say it's h3 size is around 50 pixels i will set it in the em value i think that's enough now as uh, click on this section and set the vertical align to middle now use a text widget and you see there is a, a space from the right side in this column so we can adjust the padding 
let's set overall padding of 10 pixels and then set 50 from the right okay i think that's enough now we just need a button add a button element get started large style border radius to 50 I'm seeing a difference in color. Let me just go to site settings. Global colors. Okay, it is different. Okay, this one is uh, something dark and this one is this one was light okay okay so now this section is also completed now we'll move on to the next section let's just add a new section this section uh, has uh, two column layout uh, but uh, different two columns like uh, we can use uh, inner sections basically for this so, so for main section with a simple one column uh, let's add some margin and now uh, basically this section does not have a margin from the top and in the background we set a gradient mm. 90 okay so to make this layout i will use two inner sections one for the this heading and button and other for these uh, image boxes and the video let's adjust the width of this section to 30 percent uh, let's use a heading element over here basically let's copy paste this one adjust the text Okay, a button, use the same button, line right, style, uh, text color to primary or accent and remember the gradient to white. Okay, so the text is not the uppercase, it's capitalized. and select the column and vertical alignment set to meter okay i think that's fine now add another inner section over here and it's divided into two columns and for the left column we'll decrease the width 
widths to let's say 40 percent because the column with the image have a larger width okay so you can simply use a video a widget over here from the elementor uh, you will see a video placeholder you can replace it with your own uh, video and if you want to give uh, this kind of layout you will have to export this image uh, 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 this image in png format or any other format you can set it as an image overlay turn it on and choose your image i have exported this image so you can use this as an image overlay so in this case you will also have a fully supported video player and uh, uh, as we have a play icon over the image so we'll remove the play icon from here and you can also turn on the light box so if the image is clicked the video is will be played in a pop-up okay so i think that's enough and let's set the okay so let's set some padding for this section i would say 50 pixels or 30 pixels that's enough now uh, to create these boxes you can simply uh, use or basically we can simply use an image box or an icon box i have exported these icons uh, in both formats image form form and the svg format to show you uh, simply click on it click on this section go to export and select the svg form here because we uh, instead of uh, using multiple elements and can, uh, then creating a round shape or etc with css or other we can simply export these uh, groups basically as an image and then we can uh, image or icon uh, for the lightweight version you can export them as svg let's just use an icon box element over here select your icon you can click on upload svg okay icon library the right side uh, you will see upload svg button click on that uh, for the first time you will have to enable the svg format for your wordpress installation and then upload these svg images from your directory third media and now uh, let's adjust icon position to the left html tag for the heading uh, set this to div and then go to styles uh, can adjust the spacing size of the uh, icon see if you have svg uh, format you can increase the size to any length and it will not distort or become blurry just a 70 is enough go to content and vertical alignment to middle okay let's just start copying that text let's call it text extra light because i don't want to make it fully white color i want to give them uh, give it a contrast basically okay so now just duplicate this boxes and change the content the vertical alignment of 
uh, this column to the middle as well you can also uh, increase or decrease the gap between the widgets let's say I want to increase I will set it to 30 okay now let's give this section uh, a margin from the top okay I think that's pretty much simpler similar or done okay now uh, this is the main complex section basically the pricing section in which we will be using a complex technique to use default elementor widgets with the help of some css to uh, make a, a dual pricing table with monthly or annually or you can add for further tabs if you have further plans okay so let's start that Hmm. okay so let's get started with the pricing section create a new section over here and let's just use inner sections to separate uh, the tabs and the text or you can just place the heading uh, widget and then use the inner section so let me just drag a heading over here uh, let's use dual color heading over here as well let me just copy this and paste this then to do this one let's add the text Now let's add an inner section uh, with just one column and in this inner section we'll use Elementor tabs widget okay name the tabs okay so we have two tabs and in the content section we will use short codes for the templates now how you will create short codes before uh, let's me uh, let's just adjust some stylings uh, let's align them to the center and in styling uh remove the border okay now to create the templates let's get back to our admin panel and navigate to the templates tab now remember i have told you that uh, if you are using elementor pro then you can have the short codes for the template to use them anywhere but if you don't have elementor pro you can just go to plugins add new and search for anywhere elementor and now install and activate this plugin now you will see a new tab over here ae templates now uh, as i am going to use templates tab and create the template you will create the templates in this tab the method is same uh, designing in elementor will be the same just you will be creating template over here and then using uh, short code that will be available in the short code column in the tabs uh, content section 
okay let me just deactivate this plugin i will be using elementor pro so if you are using elementor pro then just go to templates and start adding new template i will add a new template call this a section and name this template uh let me say pricing table and i will uh, prefix it with the uh, monthly and annually word okay so this pricing table is uh, for monthly uh, we will just duplicate this template and change the content in uh, accordingly let's just get started now we will create a new section with three columns okay and let's uh, just give uh, each uh, column a background color uh, white for the first and last and gradient for the middle column and we also have a, a shadow effect so style uh, gradient We also uh, have uh, rounded corners, so let's just say border and border radius to 15 pixels and let's give this box a shadow as well. See the changes, we'll have to add some element in the uh, column, uh, let's just add a text element heading basically and i will use div html tag around it okay so you now you can see the shadow effect and uh, give this section a uh, padding because we have uh, some spacing over here uh, let's just say 45 from top and bottom and 25 from left and right okay now again uh, navigate to shadows and adjust the shadow uh, let's just say 10 uh, okay, i believe 20 is fine okay now uh, copy this style and paste in this section as well uh, now you can also use uh, inner section in this column uh, so you can duplicate the uh, content easily let me just add an inner section over here uh, with one column and I will remove uh, padding from this column. Okay. Uh, what's our first column? Plan Pro, Popular and Advanced. I will uh, first design uh, everything uh, in the first column then just duplicate it in the other column <coughs> and we will also need some margin between each column. now we need the pricing uh, we can use 
सिंपल एडिंग एलिमेंट लेट्स जस्ट से डिव एंड और द स्मॉलर टेक्स्ट विच इज रिटर्न लाइक फॉर स्लैश पर मंथ यू कैन यूज स्मॉल सम एच टी एम एल ओवर है बट इफ यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू मैस विद सम एच टी एम एल एलिमेंट्स दैन यू कैन सिम्पली मेक दीज एलिमेंट्स एंड इन लाइन एलिमेंट सो यू कैन अलाइन दैम साइड बाई साइड लेट मी फर्स्ट जस्ट एट जस्ट इट स्टाइलिंग go to advanced and set its width to inline auto then duplicate this and write your other text and now adjust its styling uh we will use uh text typography style over here and then go to advanced from left we will give some margin margin left 5 pixels align this to center or bottom as you like uh, in the design we have it in the bottom so let's align it to the bottom when you align it to the bottom you will see it uh, it is aligning further below with this text so you can use a negative margin uh, sorry you can use some margin from the bottom okay and let's let's just adjust its size and weight sixteen pixels okay i think that's enough now uh we have some text over here Uh, you can uh, add a new text element after both of these and you can also uh, use a spacer or divider between them so it will clear some space just decrease its height and uh this spacer and this text is basically outside the column let's just move them inside the column okay now uh, select the column and decrease the widget space okay by default uh, in any theme mm, the paragraphs uh, have some uh, margin uh, given to them uh, uh, from bottom normally uh, you can adjust that by uh, uh, giving this element a mar negative margin from the bottom or you can just simply uh, remove the margin for elemental widgets how Uh, just inspect this element uh, this widget uh, it will probably have uh, this class element text editor okay so we just want to remove the margin bottom from element text widget paragraphs so let's uh, let me just open and uh, get back to admin dashboard and go to appearance and customize and the custom css i will provide uh, for the pricing table and any custom css that i will be applying in this uh, tutorial uh, i will be giving you uh, the link in the description so you can copy that css code and use it
so we want to remove the margin from um, margin bottom basically from the paragraphs that are in the elemental text editor widget and i will uh, use an important uh, prefix so that we can override any css that's coming from elementor or other theme okay let's just publish and publish it and reload this page once so we can have uh, updated uh, styles for uh, that we have applied over here okay so you can see the margin is removed uh, now you can uh, also remove the spacer and adjust the margin uh, according to your requirement let's just say five okay i believe that's enough now uh, there is a divider over here you can use the elementor divider which it over here let's drag that divider over here and you can see uh, you can have uh, multiple divider styles but i will be using simple uh, line because the design follows as is so uh, let's adjust the divider color okay i think that's fine now uh, to create this list we have a list widget in the elementor basically that's icon list okay now uh, select the appropriate icon uh, let me just remove these uh, go to icon library and you will have a check in circle okay let me just add some data okay now let's adjust its styling first of all uh, increase the space between uh, text is 14 pixels black Let's add this as a new global color. Uh, I will say it borders. Okay. Now we have a button. Uh, I will put this button. Uh, outside the column basically outside the inner section i will tell you why later on okay let's give this inner section a margin from the bottom okay i think that's enough okay let's style the button you can link this button with any woocommerce product or your purchase uh, form or link anything that you have built okay i think that's enough okay now let's just copy the section inner section into other columns uh, we'll have to adjust the styling here because it's it has a dark background and we'll also need to adjust the padding of this section okay 
ओके और लेट मी एडजस्ट द कलर्स ओके बॉर्डर कलर इज द सेम just copy this button into this uh, column and we'll have to adjust its color as well go to styles select gradient and select white color for both color options think that's fine okay so let me just quickly adjust the data now give this section a uh, margin uh, more margin from bottom like 50 pixels so you see we have a uh, uh, larger uh, column uh, with more options and now we want to align this get started button at the bottom for all of the uh, columns uh, so uh, for the last column you can leave it uh, like this because it uh, it it already has a larger height and then the button is adjusted we just want to make sure that these buttons are adjusted at the bottom as well uh, or uh, we can make this uh, make the positioning change to this button as well to make uh, them uh, to align them basically in the same line so just select the button go to advance uh, select position to absolute and align it to the bottom and give some space from the bottom like 20 pixels or 30 pixels i believe 20 30 pixel would be enough okay 30 just copy and paste style and uh, let's just give some more margin to this column okay now go to advanced uh, position to absolute bottom 30 pixels so these buttons are basically aligned perfectly with each other so now uh, you just have to uh, duplicate this template and uh, change some data uh, in the pricing tables so how do you do that simply just update this template first and then go to templates tab and create a new template i will call this uh, section again and pricing table now it's for annually we had a spell mistake create template let's adjust the spells over here as well support it now uh, we'll just copy this whole section over here now start adjusting the data and the pricing you see uh, you are giving 20 percent off on annual uh, 
purchases so you will adjust your pricings with the discounts applied so you can show them and that how much discount they are getting let me just open a calculator because my math isn't that good okay so first pricing 30 per month multiplied by 12 is equal to 360 minus 20 percent is equal to 288 so 288 per year and if you also want to show uh, the discounted price you can write to write it over here and you can use a strike at the HTML tag on the actual price okay so it will tell the user that it's discounted from 360 to 288 okay let me adjust the styling for others uh, sorry data so 60 multiplied by 12 is equal to 720 minus 20 percent okay so it's, it's 576 uh, i will just use the text from this widget it's discounted from 720 okay it's 960 out of 1200 per year okay you can adjust the data as well if you like but i believe the pricing should be enough let's just publish this template now finally we will bring these templates into these tabs just go to templates tab let me just close this one for now close this one for now as well you will see both the templates and their short code let me just uh, show you if you don't have elementor pro let me just deactivate it and if you go to templates now you won't see short code because you can't can't use them uh, as a short code uh, in any widgets or sections so you have to make sure that you have elementor pro or you are creating templates in the anywhere elementor tab by activating this plugin the method for designing the uh, uh, pricing tables are same because it's just elementor okay now just go to templates tab and use the appropriate short codes in the appropriate tabs for monthly i'll copy this short code and paste it over here you can also switch to the text tab to avoid any text rendering or etc okay now in annually i also use this short code now uh, normally you won't see a preview over here but you uh, when you will reload the page or you will visit the uh, visit your home page actually you will see the pricing tables over there so let's just visit our website uh, and let's see how we are doing okay uh, for the background uh, i have a pretty large monitor that has uh, about 4k resolution so uh, your screen will reflect something different like this okay so you see our background is perfectly aligned let me just revert that and go to the pricing section okay you see monthly and annually pretty cool right now we'll just have to adjust these tabs style as 
this one and we'll also have a, a, a discount uh, graphic or vector i have already exported this vector we'll just select this vector like this group 33607 and you can export it as png or svg and make sure you are using uh, exporting it at 2x if you are using uh, exporting as png because uh, you don't want to have a blurry image all right okay now let's just add the image element over here oh but before that let me just uh, okay you can see the pricing table is the template is basically also loaded over here okay now i will just apply some custom css styling to these tabs uh, because that uh, we don't have uh, a whole lot of options in the default widget so to apply the custom css first go to uh, select this uh, tabs widget and then go to advanced and then apply a custom class to it so you can assign your css uh, to this section only uh, and if you are using tabs widget anywhere else so you won't mess uh, the styling of those tabs as well let me just name it uh, wpac uh, sas website you can uh, uh, when you will be copying this css code you can just rename this class and then change the class name in the css code uh, on appropriate places just save this uh, page and go to appearance and customize and now uh, uh, you will also have the preview over here and i will be quickly uh, quickly applying some styling and then uh, i will be i will provide you the css exact css code in the video description you can just copy and paste that in your uh, installation now i will just have to uh, inspect some elements and then and you can just follow along <laughs> there is nothing much to pretty much to explain basically okay but you can adjust the typography of the tabs over here we don't want to you uh, implement css for everything the things that can be done from here will you will uh, you must do from here now we need uh, the gradient background color we can simply copy the generated gradient uh, from any of the other button okay you can see the css over here Okay, that's look almost exactly as this.
okay i think that's fine let's just publish this and reload this page for once let's check it over here as well okay so we have a monthly and annually switch like design for the pricing tables now we just need the uh, the vector for the discount upload image uh, the vector is available in icons folder let's just upload this insert and i think 100 pixel width is enough now go to uh, advanced tab uh, set width to inline auto uh, or you can give a custom width now position to absolute let's just revert the width 200 percent and oh we maybe we don't need position absolute at all uh, let's just remove the top margin from here and let me just update and reload this page there are many ways to do uh, some stuff like you can also use position absolute you can use negative margin <coughs> And padding I'll just go uh, to the advanced tab and give negative margin uh, okay note this one this one basically go to advanced set negative margin from the top think 70 should be enough now select this image and give some padding from the left and in the z index tab give a higher z index to this uh, vector like 2 and 1 to this section okay now start adjusting the padding from left uh to align this image on the right side okay let's see how it is placed okay and if you uh, don't want to use uh, this negative margin and adjusting padding let's just let me hit the control z button i think that's fine now set its position to absolute and width to inline auto just select and drag it over here anywhere you want to place it okay uh, but it can have its own drawbacks like you are adjusting on this screen user may be browsing on this screen or smaller then in that case you will have uh, to adjust this on various screen resolutions uh, differently let me just remove the 
positioning settings and let's do it the other way that we will we were working on and you can also uh, turn this element into inline uh, then select this column horizontal uh, basically uh, sorry horizontal alignment to center and then just give this uh, image a margin from the left and uh, some negative or positive margins <coughs> let me ad adjust its z index value now uh, from left i will give it some margin like 100 pixels or let's say 200 pixels or 300 pixels and then from bottom some negative margin In this way uh, you will have some control over screen resolutions it will stick there uh, no matter what screen res resolution user is browsing from it is the more uh, convenient or uh, adjusted way uh, to do this kind of stuff uh, obviously uh, if you are elementor expert you will have some more ideas in your mind some more workarounds or solutions we can do uh, some stuff with uh, by using some custom html or css as well but uh, my focus is to uh, do everything inside the elementor without using too much html or css that will overload your head for some reason if you don't know html or css okay i believe that's adjusted and our pricing table is also completed now let's see what's left in our design now there are basically two or three uh, sections uh, the reviews CTA and the footer let's start creating other sections <coughs> okay so now let's uh, complete the remaining sections uh, the first one is uh, the review section uh, let me just give this section more margin from the top okay now uh, Let's just create a new section. Let me just copy this heading to this section. Now I'll use an inner section uh, with three columns. And let's start assigning the color and shadows and margin padding, etc. The first value element is the rating. Let's change the colors. OK. 
okay i was just seeing the color of the unmarked star let's just give five star rating for all the reviews okay now a text element now we need an image box image alignment to the left and div for the title html tag I think it just look exactly just the stars a little bit different uh, you can use unicode okay now unicode are exactly as this one okay now we have completed uh, the review box let's just duplicate this one uh, for the number of items you want to show uh, in the design we got three so I will be replicating it to three now let's just uh, change the images or and the text i think that's good enough now uh, the CTA section before the footer we have a background color saved for it pg2 uh we can also use an inner section to decrease the width of the text container or we can also decrease the width of the main container because we don't have a lot of sections or widgets in this section okay that's fine okay i think that's fine now uh, you see there is a border uh, that is separating these sections uh, you can either set border bottom uh, to this section and then in the footer or you can just adjust the border in the footer for top and the bottom now to create the footer layout uh, just get back to the admin dashboard okay uh, footer and header both are remaining now in this uh, video a further section basically let's just learn uh, how to create the header and footer using uh, the theme builder of the elementor in the templates 
you got theme theme builder now remember i told you if you uh, don't have elementor pro then you can use header footer builder from the extra team uh, with the free version of the elementor the process is the same uh, while designing the footer and the header uh, you just uh, need to create the templates in the header footer builder uh, plugin uh, by extra let me just show you quickly search for header footer sorry we got a spell mistake header footer and install this plugin and activate it now you will have uh elementor header and footer builder uh, under the appearance tab just go to that uh, section and just create add new template uh, you can skip it uh, now you will give your template the appropriate name like header and then select option for that template it's header and then you can select the uh, condition where you want to display in that header you can display it on the entire website or you can create multiple headers to show on different conditions okay now you just publish the template and add it with uh, elementor rest of the process will be the same let me just go to plugins and deactivate this plugin now by using uh, header and footer builder uh, theme builder basically by elementor pro go to templates tab and click on the theme builder now you get um, a lot of options and we'll go with the header and click on create a new one now uh, the power of the elementor pro uh, uh, is li lies here basically you get ready made designs that you can simply import and then use them uh, you don't have to uh, build the header or footer uh, from scratch you get a lot of op header options uh, built by elementor you can just simply import them see if you have any uh, thing similar to your design we just have a logo over here a menu in the center and a button on the right let's just see if we have any template okay you see we already have a similar template in here uh, but if you don't have elementor pro and you are designing using the elementor header and footer builder the uh, plugin by astra you just really simply have to create three a section with three columns and then uh, uh, put the logo in the left column menu in the center column and the button in the right column uh, set like 20% width to this column 20% to this column and 60% to this column so you get a design uniformity and align the menu items you can create menu items by either uh, using uh, elementor pros nav uh, menu widget or uh, when you install header footer builder by astra team uh, you also get uh, widgets like uh, menu and etc uh, so you can create a menu from your wordpress dashboard and then use it in the appropriate section let me just insert this design okay so we need to upload the logo over here uh, by default the site logo widget is used and site logo are set in the uh, customizer settings so let me just go to the customizer and set a logo for our website go to appearance customize you normally set your logo for your website in the uh, customizer in the site identity section if you are using any other theme uh, it can go under any uh, other tab like header okay let's just select let's see if i have exported the logo go to icons uh, images no, i don't have exported a logo since uh, it was only a simple text uh, we can use the text element over here 
and if you still want to use an image uh, obviously if you have an uh, image based logo i'll just export it as an image like png and I export it to uh, around 3x so we got a crispy image export uh, let's just cut this one from here and i'll put it in the images folder and i'll call it logo.png okay uh, let's just upload the logo over here okay skip cropping uh, since you know we had disabled the um, header footer from this canvas because we are using a canvas template so you won't see it over here let me just quickly publish it and then um, i'll show you how to show the header and footer add a condition i'll show it on the entire website save and close and um, let me just reload this one uh, because we have uploaded the logo later on so you we will need to have the changes to reflect okay the logo is here now the navigation menu widget in the navigation menu widget you will uh, create a menu first then you will able you will be able to select the menu over here how to create the menu let me just close this customizer uh, go to appearance and menus and create your menu now remember we have uh, a single page website so we, uh, we will be linking each menu item to the to these sections so how you can link them to the sections so you, uh, if the user clicks on a menu item it uh, goes to the appropriate section so uh, first of all the home section uh, start <coughs> clicking on the sections then go to advanced tab you will have to assign a css id to each section uh, and you will use the same id in the um, menus screen uh, for the menu links uh, so that when a user clicks on them it uh, it gets a user to the section so for the first section i'll just set the css id to home and in the next section which uh, that is services section instead of setting id over here you can also use menu anchor element that is just basically serves the same purpose but uh, it also applies some uh, scrolling animations to the when user is clicking on them so i'll just call it services now uh, Uh, what do we call it <laughs> let's just call it about the product or about menu anchor drag the menu anchor here uh, let's just call it about oh sorry about okay now these are the features I'll call this features now this is pricing let me just copy this widget pricing and now the reviews reviews or testimonials whatever you want to call them okay call it contact and we will link this one with the contact button okay update now just uh, use the appropriate ids in the menu starting with this one let's just create a menu i'll call it 
main menu okay uh, we'll add custom links instead of uh, the pages or etc but if you have a multi-page website then you can use appropriate pages in your menu go to custom links starting with the hash sign followed by the name you have given to these sections or css id that you have given to them this one is home and label your menus home add to menu and now i'll just uh, create more uh, menu items uh, that are linking with these menu anchors this is services okay the menu is completed let's save it and reload the header builder okay you see if the menu is here main menu uh, you can adjust its styling alignment uh, pointer i set to none or you can set it to just text and you can also adjust the breakpoint uh, go to styles and adjust the horizontal padding and adjust the column width give this one 20 percent this one 20 percent as well so menu is perfectly aligned to the center now we'll have to adjust the colors like the default color i'll be setting the color to white and let's just uh, select the sections uh, or go to settings first rename this template header and choose html tag for the container i will select header okay now this section uh, we have a vertical uh, padding for the menu as well uh, like 36 so i'll decrease it to 10 and uh, let's just adjust, adjust add some padding to this section or you can uh, set a minimum height of like uh, 90 pixels or i believe 70 or 80 pixels would be enough and vertical alignment to middle okay i'll just set a background color uh, to this section for now to just see how our content is looking uh, then i'll remove it let's set it to primary okay that looks good enough align the image to the left and you can also decrease the width of the logo okay okay i'll go to over and we'll have uh, uh, let's say white because we have a dark background so we don't want to use any other color okay uh, that button uh, let's call it uh, sign up sign up or contact remember we will be linking the contact button so we don't need this menu item okay let's just save and i'll call it and just link this with the appropriate section okay now we'll have to adjust the color I think that's good 
now let's have a look at the responsive settings okay i just decrease the size of it on the tablet okay that's good now uh the menu you see the column uh, or button is hidden on the uh, mobile mode let's just see no uh, i believe we have we we'll just have to adjust the width okay now if even if we adjust the width the menu would be on the center and the button on the right uh, but i want to uh, stick the menu to the left and then the logo and then the uh, button how you can do that you can just simply build dual headers uh, one for mobile and one for desktop and tablet let's just duplicate this one hide first one uh, on the mobile and this one on the desktop and tablet now we can adjust the columns uh, however we want okay so menu toggle first i'll adjust its width now to 20 uh, this one to 30 or 40 i believe 30 is fine and this one to okay go to menu toggle align it to the left go to styles adjust the styling of the toggle button white okay uh, on hover uh, we'll just select white as well okay so we have the menu and you can also adjust the uh, drop down menu uh, styling okay i believe that's fine okay now let's see why the button isn't displaying also uh, remove the uh, basically decrease the size of the header menu and decrease the padding I just remove the button and add a new button over here I believe there is some kind of styling or other options are applied when we have imported that template I'll just create a new button here let's just call it sign up link it with the contact section Okay, that looks much better. Okay. Now let's just reload this page and also make sure uh, to set up a higher Z index value. Uh, 
to the header so they uh, always remain on the top you can also apply some motion effects to them you can also stick them on the top basically this one is already sticky uh, and i believe the desktop one is already uh, is also sticky uh, okay sticky so i will just show you one another technique to change the color of the sticky section with the help of some css because when we will be scrolling down uh, the uh, transparent background uh, will not work the menu items and the button will not show appropriately let me just adjust some margin for this form it was too close to the text okay now let's just remove the background color that we have applied earlier to these uh, sections okay update and uh, oh, now and go to settings and change its template from elementor canvas to elementor full width so we'll have the header preview over here and then we can adjust the uh, featured area or the hero section uh, okay uh, we are i believe we also have some box shadow we'll remove that Let's just update this one and reload. Okay, so I'll just set the negative margin to this section so it will go beyond the header. Uh, for the negative margin that's why I had set the uh, minimum height so we'll exactly know uh, how much negative margin we have to give it's basically 80 pixels plus the um, any padding that you have given to that section uh, I believe uh, let's just give this 10 from top and 10 from bottom so it's uh, it will basically around 100 pixels let's just say 100 so you see it's exactly now behind the uh, header and header is sticky now select the header and go to motion effects and uh, set an effects offset i set it to like uh, 800 pixels and I'll set an entrance animation to uh, fade in down. That will look nice. Okay, so now we'll have to adjust the height of this section. Let me just say to 950. So we'll got, we'll have enough space. Uh, let's increase the margin of this section, uh, like around 180. That would be sufficient enough. Okay, so update this and uh, now let's uh, adjust the style i was talking about about the transparency if you go to appearance and customize and uh, let's just set a class to this section is i say wpac uh, sauce header and go to this section let me just rename this section you can rename any section in the navigator by double click on them on on it i'll call it desktop header and uh, this one mobile header okay so let's assign the class to this one as well and i will also adjust motion effects offset to this one like uh, under that will be enough for mobile okay uh, let's just reload this one because we have made some changes uh, 
now i'll just apply some css you will get the css code in that documentation or video description that i have given to you okay so now when the uh, header um, animated effects are applied you will have an another class and let me just adjust the uh, effects offset i have set it too much i call it just like 300 would be enough okay let me just reload it now i'll just uh, change the uh, header background color while uh, scrolling and the uh, uh, effects offset is applied so we'll have a better readability uh, over here okay you see it's hard to read the text from here and i believe we'll have to adjust the height a bit call it 70 it was too much and again in this section we'll have to set the negative margin to 90 would be enough okay let's just reload this one okay now uh let me inspect this one so we have our class applied to it uh, i'll just write down some css so remember when the effects offset is applied we'll get a new class elementor sticky effects and then we'll change the color of uh, background color of this header let me just pick the primary color uh, i'll just make sure it applies with the important okay now see we have a better readability of the header you can also uh, decrease the padding and uh, the height of this section if you don't want that bigger header but i think that will just do fine and if you click on any menu item it will get you to the appropriate section okay and let's just check the responsiveness that's also fine okay the responsiveness of the home page is still yet to be adjusted we'll do just that in uh, later on in this tutorial okay okay that's fine enough okay okay now let's close this one close this one now uh, we need to build our footer footer is also very simple you can just use a ready-made uh, template from the elementor pro header footer builder i'll also uh, i'll be doing that let's just start okay go to theme builder and then go to footer create a new footer template and let's see if we have a matching design i think this will do just fine and it also has some extras like uh, social icons we'll just have to add one more column to match the design okay remove this one adjust the text to the 
center okay and you can either uh, duplicate one column uh, and have a more have more menu space like this one but i think this will just do fine go to styles and and if you are building uh, again if you are using header footer builder by astra and you are uh, building the header uh, footer from scratch uh, remember uh, it's basically simple remember the steps you will have to create the appropriate columns then use a heading widget then a icon list widget or you can create menus from the backend and then use the nav menu widget over here but i will recommend using icons list it's just fine uh, and link them with appropriate pages or services okay and uh, i think mm, this footer will do just fine okay the menu icons are loaded we just have to adjust the background color to ours and we also need to set a border from top and bottom we have a border color uh, like this borders publish this one add a condition entire site save and close and let's just have a preview of our website and see if the footer is set appropriately okay uh, i believe the border color needs to be adjusted a little bit Okay, now let's have a look at the responsiveness it is designed by elementor team so it will be responsive by default but i believe uh, i will have to adjust some uh, let's call it 50 percent 50 percent and this one to 100 percent okay i think that's much better okay now our footer is also responsive now let's start adjusting the responsive uh, issues of the home page as well let me just remove that uh, close that basically now our design is basically completed we'll have to adjust the responsive issues basically they will be there and now before uh, adjusting the responsive issues let me just rename this section so we'll have an easier navigation okay so finally let's uh, move towards our final uh, section that is about adjusting uh, the responsive issues in the templates i we have already fixed uh, header and footer by building them now we'll adjust the home page adjusting responsive issues in elementor uh, is uh, pretty much simple or easy fairly easy you just have to turn on the responsive mode then you will get these three options by default tablet and mobile when you are in a particular screen resolution 
uh, like tablet you will start adjusting the elements and the backgrounds the colors or the sizes of the widgets or uh, text or elements and it will be applied to only that particular screen resolution if you turn back on the desktop mode the desktop mode will have its own styling so you can uh, adjust uh, everything without worrying about other stuff uh, it will not mess up on other screen resolutions the changes you will make will be uh, applied to that particular screen resolution only but in very uh, rare cases some widgets have some uh, properties that are adjust, uh, adjusted globally uh, but uh, you will see like if you click on any element you will see the align uh, responsive modes alongside every property that can be adjusted on different screen resolutions so uh, you just make sure that that property that you are adjusting also have responsive uh, modes or different screen resolutions so uh, you can make sure uh, that that change is being applied on that screen resolution only first of all uh, let's go back to desktop mode and let's select our hero column and the thing we forgot in the earlier uh, we will have to select the no repeat option here because uh, you can see the background was repeating on uh, the different skin resolution so let's just start adjusting like we'll have to give uh, a bit more margin negative margin to the top uh, let's say 100 percent enough so let's make 120 or 110 Okay, 110 is enough okay now uh, the background image like I had uh, I have talked about earlier you will see uh, you can change the background image for uh, each screen resolution okay but you can change the color of the background for each screen resolution just keep those in mind you will see a uh, responsive toggle or uh, buttons like this on either you can make different uh, images for each screen resolution or you can just start adjusting the uh, position like i will start this from top right on tablet so you see our background adjusted now we'll have to just adjust the font sizes font sizes are also adjust, uh, adjusted for per screen resolution I'll make 2 for the tablet and I'll decrease the margin on the tablet uh, 100 or 120 would be enough okay now decrease the margin for this section as well Okay, so I think that's fine now we can also uh, adjust the negative margin of this section as well or before adjusting the margin we'll also have to adjust the height of this section it's too much for tablet start with the 600 I think 600 is enough and now you can start adjusting the negative margin of this section let me just make it quickly 150 i think 150 is enough but you can increase a bit more okay now it looks fine now images i think it's fine but you can adjust the width on the tablet like 80 percent would be enough now the size of uh, this heading is fine I uh, will just have to adjust the font sizes of these sections and increase the width of the icon 30 content uh, title to 18 16 15 and this one too I believe 12 would be fine now 
just copy paste style paste style okay i think in these sections are also uh, looking good enough okay now this one as we have discussed you can change the size of the button for each screen resolution from this drop down this doesn't work uh, it will apply uh, the global styling you can however manually adjust the padding of the button like this for per screen resolution okay and font size I think that's enough and this section also looks good uh, this setting looks fine to me but you can adjust the font size a bit more to make it expand into two lines okay now again the text size should be decreased here okay that's fine now uh, for this you can either keep this aligned to left to right or you can just go and make this column 100% width and this one also 100% width and then click uh, on the uh, inner section uh, the parent inner section of these columns go to advanced responsive and reverse columns tablet so you'll get the video column first and the icon boxes uh, later on and you can also align them like this and these also have responsive toggles so this these will work on tablet like this okay i think that's fine okay now for pricing sections uh, um, you can uh, adjust a lot more a lot or of the stuff if you because if you have three pricing tables you will have to show two in one column and then one uh, in the other column that will look uh, not good that will work only if you have like uh, four pricing tables then you can adjust two per row uh, but you can uh, either display the pricing table on tablet uh, you know, one pricing table at the time at in the tablet mode and uh, i believe that should only be for the mobile screen uh, but you can't adjust them here because these are separate templates created and under the templates tab so you'll have to edit each template individually then make the changes uh, rest of the things looks fine i'll come back to this later after fixing others okay the review section also looks fine to me let's just uh, adjust some text sizes of the content uh, like decreasing some font size copy paste style paste style okay that's fine this is pretty much fine we don't have to work on that okay everything is uh, fixed on the tablet mode now let's switch to the mobile again uh, start adjusting from the top uh, for the mobile uh, let's decrease the height to 500 of this hero section uh, height isn't changing it's basically minimum height the content is spanning this section let's start adjusting the size of the font i think that's fine uh,
Oke. Okay. It also needs to be adjusted. Let's select this section. Go to styles and again uh, position top right for the background. Uh, I think it's or doing something let's say center center okay center center also doesn't work top right it is and from the size set it to cover this will fix some things okay now adjust the negative margin let's first remove the margin and then start adjusting these uh we'll have to to adjust these sizes uh let's just uh, the button also has too much text so it won't align on the right it should be at the bottom uh, let's go to advanced uh, responsive and hide this button on the desktop or uh, instead of hiding uh, we can also go to layout and set set its position to absolute but if we set its position to absolute you see it doesn't have a responsive toggle so it will be position absolute on all the screen resolutions so the workaround is uh, let me just duplicate this section and go to advanced responsive and hide this one for mobile and hide hide this one on desktop and mobile and let me just hide this section from this editing screen as well so we can have uh, a proper look at what we are doing okay, go to advanced and uh, set the position to absolute uh, from top well, from left I will give something like 10 uh, and from top I will give something like 20 so this will align the button here and now um, go to the uh, form and let's just say uh, okay now we, now we have duplicated the form we can and change the text size so instead of start start for free i can just say sign up okay and now uh, go to the form field and adjust its width like 70 percent and button to 30 percent okay why don't we just remove this button okay now it looks fine let's just uh, okay everything is fine let's get back to hero section and let me uh, okay let's just increase the height of this section okay, this does not work i will have to set it to auto or cover okay we can i believe we can compromise on the shape on the mobile screen a bit uh, i think 600 would be enough and or Five 
why don't we just remove the image from the mobile and use a gradient and we can just okay oh sorry if we <laughs> remove the uh, background image it will also be removed on the desktop uh, we don't want to do that because we haven't duplicated this section and we we don't have a dual version of this okay we can also have something like this okay now let's give this section a negative margin okay i think that looks good enough you can adjust it according to your requirement or however you like but i feel this one is good enough okay now let's start decreasing the sizes of these headings copy these are just perfectly aligned and now we'll have to remove the padding from this section or you can set just 10 from all sides and align these items to center or uh, left however you prefer okay that's good um, that's also fine fine okay uh, you can also reverse the columns on mobile as well okay that's fine style you see i what i told you about the pricing section will be perfectly aligned on the mobile screen we'll just have to adjust some uh, margin from these elements on the bottom so the button uh, can be aligned because the columns on mobile <coughs> tablet and desktop resolution and they are aligned uh, uh, their height are automatically adjusted according to the largest column in the uh, section but on the mobile uh, you see it will get uh, get back to default height uh, for their content so we'll just have to give some margin to these elements from the bottom uh, let's move on uh, okay i think that's fine uh let's just adjust these on uh, on center okay uh this definitely needs some font size adjustment okay that's fine okay so in the footer the logo isn't aligned in center you can align it in the center by editing the footer template uh, just edit footer and see uh, it shows us it's aligned on the center maybe we'll have to reload the page never mind okay so now finally the responsive issues of the home page are fixed just the pricing tables are remaining uh, now let's just adjust them let me get back to admin dashboard go to the templates tab where you have created those templates uh, let's edit both we'll just copy paste the styles if needed 
uh, we should have fixed them when we were uh, designing them you should also uh, do all kind of responsive uh, testing uh, while building separate templates so you won't have to modify them all later on so that's a lesson for us as well okay now let's start adjusting go to tablet mode i think uh, we'll just have to adjust some font sizes on the tablet uh, You can remove the padding from this section and decrease the margin a bit to give them a, a, a little bit more breathing room. I would be fine. I'll just copy the styling to the other template as well okay. it's fine for the tablet mode let's just let's turn on the <coughs> mobile mode see uh, now let's just give a margin from the bottom to these list elements enough so that the button should be aligned at the bottom so copy this one is pretty much fine uh, we'll have to adjust this one okay now that's also fine okay so our pricing tables are also uh, responsive now all the things are fixed uh, fixed let's just update these templates and close this one okay finally last but not the least uh, let me tell you one more thing if you want to adjust these stylings on other screens rather than these uh, default like uh, desktop one have a bigger resolution uh, some laptops have a uh, resolution between the tablet and the desktop you can add a custom breakpoint as well click on this settings icon and you can add a new breakpoint like laptop and <coughs> tablet extra mobile extra and widescreen laptop update and now you'll have to reload the page Now you can adjust the further settings on uh, for laptops as well and you can also add your own custom sizes uh, okay let's see why this one is here okay hero A margin is disturbed due to some reason okay now you can turn on the responsive mode and go to tablet mode uh, basically laptop mode and then you can start adjusting for that as well
I believe our margin wasn't the issue or is it okay so the issue is uh, we had adjusted the or high uh, uh, header for uh, uh, desktop uh, tablet and mobile now we have added uh, another <clears throat> Uh, uh breakpoint like tab um, uh, laptop will have to re, uh, hide the header and these sections uh, from uh, this screen as well like go to advanced responsive okay you see uh sorry this one is demo this one responsive so we'll also have to remove this one from the uh laptop screen and then we'll also have to go to theme builder and hide the header from uh, uh, the mobile header from uh, laptop as well edit the header template Let's get back, revert it back, and this one is mobile header. And go to responsive, and we'll also have to hide this on the laptop. And go to desktop header, go to responsive, and we'll also okay. This one should be hidden on the only mobile. Update. Let's just reload this page. Okay. okay we had adjusted the negative margin too much because we thought there was some error but it was due to um, both headers were being displayed okay now go to responsive uh, <clears throat> laptop and now we'll have to adjust the negative margin ninety would be enough here as well now let's go to style image position to top right on laptop then you will also have to adjust some padding in the header i think you can do that now okay that's how you adjust uh, on uh, everything on different screen resolutions and you can also add your custom breakpoints like see this heading also needs some adjustment Okay, now uh, adjust rest of the stuff for this lap uh, laptop screen as well. Everything else looks just fine to me. Okay, now let's turn off the responsive mode and last but not the least, the animations. You can add uh, different kind of animations to the uh, widgets or sections or different elements uh, if you want. To have some animations on your page if you don't want then you can ignore them but let me just show you how you can add nice animations select any element or section or column and go to advanced tab you will have motion effects tab and then entrance animation there are a lot uh, a whole lot of animations that you can apply on to elements let's just say uh, fade in down for this one and uh, on this paragraph i'll have uh, fade in but you can also add a delay to animations like uh, if you want to perform the animations in a particular section one by one then you will have to add some delay like i will have a 500 milliseconds delay this so this will appear after this uh, heading is appeared now let's just select this 
intersection motion effects entrance animation and you can add something like uh, fade in here as well and i'll you just have to increase the delay uh, one after another like uh, previous one was 500 so this should be 800 900 or 1000 or something let me say 900 so it ha it must have a, a decent delay amount so they can appear one after another and for this one go to advanced uh, motion effects and i'll call it zoom in let's just say 1000 to this as well okay now let's uh, start adding animations to the other sections you can add them or ignore them or however you like Okay, so now we have some cool animations uh, on our home page as well now let's just have a preview of our page let me just remove the top admin dashboard admin navigation bar basically toolbar uh, let's just reload okay now you see we have some amazing animations as well okay so finally we have done it we have converted a static design file from figma into a fully interactive functional uh, Web, web layout using elementor page builder and the wordpress okay if you have enjoyed watching this video give me a thumbs up that will motivate me to make some more video tutorials for you and if you have any uh, suggestions that uh, that can help me improve my uh, video tutorials in english uh, you can also uh, leave your recommendations in the comments i'll definitely look uh, look into them and if you want to uh, support my channel you can just simply purchase this ready-made template uh, from the link in the video description and the uh, uh, template you will purchase from the link in the video description will have some extra styling perks like different color schemes so you you will get some like uh, by uh, while supporting you will also get some uh, value for your money so thank you for watching enjoy designing or happy designing with elementor see you in some other video tutorials have a good day